Now, what could possibly be better than Linux on an iPod? Linux on an iPod that plays Doom, of course, and here to show us just that is our very own Paul Tobias. Thanks hey, for coming on and getting in front of the camera. And so you're here to talk about putting Linux on the iPod. Where did you hear about this, man? Uh, I first read it in Make Magazine a while ago, but I checked it out back then and didn't really support my generation iPod, and there weren't as many applications that you can use it for, but it was kind of interesting. But recently I checked it out, and they've done a lot more development. It goes all the way up to the fifth generation iPods with video. Sweet. So aside from Doom, what else can you do with iPod Linux? Um, there's other emulators for like the NES, the Game Boy, um, there's MAME, and there's plenty of writing programs, other uh, music writing players. Writing programs? How do, how do you write on an iPod? Uh, you gotta, there's lots of different text input methods, um, but the main one is you scroll through the letters and numbers and you press select and you write one letter at a time with just the one button. Gotcha. So what about everybody at home that has an iPod that's wondering what the compatibility is you know, by generation of iPod? Um, well, the wiki on iPodLinux.org definitely helps explain it. There's a whole graph listing the generations and what parts of the iPod it supports. Okay, but we're not gonna see it on a shuffle anytime soon? Nah, definitely not. Okay, now if we put Linux on our iPod, are we gonna lose any of the original iPod functionality? Um, absolutely no, because what you're doing is dual booting, and it'll let you either boot the Apple firmware or the Linux firmware. So it's just like Grub, if you were to put you know, yep. Linux on a Windows machine, or I guess on this case, on a Mac. Spiffy. Now, how do you get to that bootloader, though? If you're in the Apple OS or if, you know you want to switch between yeah, them. Yeah. Uh, well, when you want to switch, you have to press the center button and the menu button at the same time. That allows your your iPod to reboot, and it will go into the bootloader program. Can you walk us through the uh, steps of getting Linux actually on your iPod? All right. First thing to do is you have to put your iPod into disk mode. Uh, you do that through the iTunes, it's in the preferences under the iPod tab. Um, after that, you download the installer, you uh, unpack it and start running it. It will find your iPod and it will give you a list of all the modules and programs so, you can install on it. So it's kind of like got its own built-in package management system. Yes, it's very Linux-like. Okay, so is there any big difference between installing it on a Windows iPod and a Mac iPod? Yes. Um, because uh, Windows has to format it to the uh, FAT32 file structure, it doesn't really see the Linux partition too well, so it, it's kind of quirky. But on the Mac, it's a lot easier because it's used to seeing um, the different things like the HFS+. Plus. Okay, so on the Windows side, it actually puts a Linux uh, partition on there. Yes. And Windows obviously can't see that. Just if you were to dual boot like Gen 2 and uh, Windows, you wouldn't be able to see your... Gen 2 file system unless you had some additional software. Uh, is there any recommendations you have? When we were researching this problem, we uh, came across LTools, which was a neat little application that kind of set it up to view as in like uh, the Windows File Explorer, and you can see the whole, uh, both the FAT32 file structure and the Unix files, Linux file structure. Sweet, so what's the trick to getting Doom on your iPod? The thing is, since the iPod isn't capable of running both the Linux uh, OS and Doom at the same time, you have to launch it from like the BIOS. Mm -hmm. And the way you do that is you get a launcher. Uh, we use C Launcher. Um, it took a little uh, rewriting some of the. Uh, so you edit your your RC files yeah, your so RC that when files. it starts up Linux, you know, rather than going right into your GUI you get the option to go into different things. Yes, definitely. So that kind of sounds very similar to back in the day, if you remember uh, trying to play something like Duke Nukem 3D and you would just you know, get a flo special floppy that would you'd boot off that and get your, the you know, optimal system performance because it wouldn't load you know, all that other fun yeah. DOS stuff. Or kind of akin to maybe uh, exiting Windows 3.1 or Going 95 to, to DOS and playing all Doom that. and Quake 2 there. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's awesome. Now, would you say it's actually playable, though? Oh yeah, you can have lots of fun just running around blowing little bad guys away and opening up all the little secret doors. Um, what are the controls like? Uh, the controls are a little quirky, you don't get the strafe, you don't get to walk backwards, but everything else is there. You can't, and you can't change your gun unless you run out of ammo. Uh, that can be kind of a pain. <laughs> but, 
we've been there. We've successfully beaten it uh, on the iPod, the fifth gen. Yeah. And I gotta say, man, this this is awesome. Now, if anybody's interested in trying this at home, where would you say that they head to? Um, the best resources resource is the iPod Linux wiki. Everything's there. All the things you need to download. Even the iPod firmware updater is there. You go there and it'll explain it. It's a little daunting at first, but once you get used to the idea of way it works on the iPod, you can also figure out how it works on the wiki. Sweet. Well, thanks for uh, coming on and showing us the Linux no way problem, for our iPods. Man. Now, we're going to head over to Ali and see what's coming on next in the show.